Yeah, listen, well bold. Can you take us through your sort of emotions of the last two or three days? It's been a bit of a whirlwind, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it has. I mean, I got the call on, what was it now, Tuesday morning, just woke up with a um, missed call of, of Spoon saying, text me when you when you see this. So, um, yeah, completely out of the blue. Um, and, yeah, started the, the morning in Manchester, ended up in Cardiff. And, and to go from that, to have one training session with, you know, a bunch of new teammates and and wrap things up almost in half the time. What do you what do you reckon to that game today? Yeah, I mean, look, a lot of the guys are coming off uh, the back of blast cricket. Um, I felt like my game was in a good place. So um, I guess that the fact it all happened so quickly and you've got less time to train was almost better uh, instead of sort of, you know, um, obsessing over your skills a little bit. Um, you know, I took the confidence that my game was in, in a good place and, and obviously just went from there. And I guess you're used to being sort of a rookie in the England dressing room from 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 the numbers I've seen I think you were the third most experienced player on the on the pitch for England today that's you you, you put in the, the senior man performance didn't you <laughs> front row picture um no nah, look for me I guess um I always thrive uh, regardless of whichever team I played for when you know you've got that extra responsibility and I think um you know, speaking to Stokesy, he he basically just said he wanted me to take the new ball and, and even out there sort of bringing me on when we needed wickets. Um, that sort of stuff, I feel like as a, for me personally, I thrive off that. Um, and yeah, that's the sort of inkling I got off, off Spoons and, and Stokesy over the last day. And um, I'm glad that I was able to back back that up and yeah, make the most of that responsibility a bit. Paul, did you want to jump in? Oh, thanks, mate. Um, hi, Sakeep. Um, how do you view your international career up to now? Because you've long been considered a bowler of, of huge promise, but I think you've played five ODIs and six T20s. Um, would you have hoped to have played more than that by now? Do you think injuries have been the main reason you haven't? No, I, I think the main thing is, you know, it's, it's the number one side in the world and you've got to do some pretty special things when, um, you know, to sort of take over from some of the guys who who have the spots. Um, and when I've played for England, I haven't sort of managed to take that opportunity. Um, I, I don't think it's a side where, you know, coming in, you've got the time to settle, I guess. Um, you know, you've got to come in and try and make the most of your opportunity because there's that many good players around, especially if you're trying to come in and, and try and nail your place down. Um, and I felt in the sort of... But more in, in the T20s, I haven't nailed my place yet. But in the one day, I was, you know, I was just starting to make a bit of strides uh, last summer, and then obviously I haven't played for twelve months. But yeah, I'm glad I was able to sort of take that opportunity today, um, and then hopefully I can just back it up in the rest of the series. And how about Red Bull? How big an ambition is Test cricket? It's right up there. I mean, if I, this year I've enjoyed Red Bull more, if I'm honest. Um, in the past, obviously. If, you know, when you felt like I've been closer to England and white ball cricket, you know, that's obviously taking a little bit more priority. But uh, this year with the red ball, bowling a lot of overs and obviously playing red ball, I've, I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, I've completely had my head around playing red ball cricket this weekend for Lancashire. But um, yeah, test cricket is part of, definitely part of my ambitions. And for me, I just want to keep playing first class cricket and keep improving. Thank you. Will, Will and uh, then John. Hi, Sir Keith. Um, I just wonder whether you could talk us through the, the sort of message that Ben and, and Chris have given the group this this week. Obviously, none of you were expecting this opportunity. Um, and, and what they've said is it, is it a case of everyone's going to get a go in the series and, and just try and seize your opportunity? Um, I, I guess the message we've had, um, and something Stokes reiterated last night after training, was yes it is weird circumstances but at this given time um everyone here deserves their place and everyone here is the best player uh, uh, best player for that position that they're in so i think um you know the message that obviously stokes gave to the boys obviously you know should hopefully fill them with a lot of confidence that you know given it is weird circumstances that everyone deserves to be here um you know that's the message we've had of, of stokes i just ask about the but these next two games, Lords is a, a full house. Edgbaston's, I think, 75, 80 percent. It's sort of a famously rowdy crowd. You must be having played at home behind closed doors. You must be pretty excited about the prospects of, of playing in front of the full houses at home. Yeah, absolutely. And even you know, there's a small crowd here, but uh, you could even hear them at times. And um, 
yeah, with the crowds at, at Lords and Edgebaston, I think that's why you want to play international cricket. Because, uh, you know, it, those are the sort of crowds you get. Me having sort of experience, I was in full houses in Roses games before. Um, it's a it's a great sort of spectacle spectacle to be in. So um, yeah, I look. The, I'm pretty sure the boys will, will, will enjoy and, and thrive of playing in front of a full house. Cheers. Okay, on. Yeah, hi, that's the key. Uh, you had two wickets in the first three balls of the match. Could you could you quite believe what was happening? Um, no, nah, to be fair, you're just very much in the moment. Um, getting a wicket first ball is, is is obviously the best start you can get off to, but obviously just eases the nerves a little bit. Um, and then to get two in the first over, um, yeah, it was unbelievable. But it was just sort of making sure after that you still kept the intensity up and sort of just didn't... Um, go through the motions a bit just because you got a couple of poles early and I felt we did that and obviously picked up four wickets up top in the first 10 which obviously puts the opposition on the back foot straight away so um, yeah it was a great start couldn't have asked for much better there obviously getting Babau there, there sort of star batsman getting in second ball was a pretty significant moment as well yeah especially I think on a wicket like that where he was doing a bit up top uh, you want to get him in as early as possible and obviously try and get him out I think you know, the later he comes in, the the harder it is to get someone of that quality out. Uh, so luckily for us, we got him in early and, and got him out as well. Yes, thanks. Matt, Matt you want to uh, finish us off? Yes. Hi, Saki. Uh, well, Bold, I just wondered, you mentioned the bizarre situation. How many of the players, your teammates today, you'd met before? How many you were meeting for the first time and what that was like? Um, let me have a think. I guess the only one who I've probably spoke to for the first time was was David Payne. I haven't really played much against Gloucestershire, but a lot of the other guys have sort of been in a similar environment. We've all played against. Um, so yeah, there was a few guys I'd, I'd played with the first time on the field, and I think for us to gel as well as we did as an eleven on the field, um, having not most of us haven't played with each other, um, to do that I think was was a great effort from everyone. What do you put that down to? Um, I guess look, at the end of the day, it's cricket. Everyone knows what to do in the field. Um, and today, I think the good thing was we just stuck to the basics as, as long as possible. Um, you know, we kept pretty basic fields in, bold attackingly. Um, and there wasn't much more to it, if, 